Good afternoon, uh, everyone from uh, the NPCC team. A warm welcome to you all for making it uh, to our webinar this uh, afternoon entitled Translating Digital Prowess into Tangible Return on Investment. Why digitalization is the only way to go. Before we move further, let me put forward how we will go about in today's webinar. The first part will be conducted by Dr. Ashwin Kisuna, followed by Mr. George James Pennington, who will take over just after Dr. Kisuna. Towards the end, we'll be having a question and answers session, and you're all invited to post your questions in the chat box. Participants, it's now time to get the ball rolling. I have the pleasure now to call upon Mr. Ashit Ganga, the Executive Director of the NPCC, to say a few words. Mr. Ganga, over to you. Thank you, Dibesh. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. I am pleased to welcome you all to the first webinar organized by the NPCC in the context of the Enterprise Go Digital project launched on the 4th of March. As you may be aware, the project is being implemented in collaboration with the United Nations Development Programme and the Government of Japan. It aims at increasing productivity and is strengthening the resilience <clears throat> of small and medium enterprises, particularly in the new normal environment marked by the challenges of the COVID-19. An important aspect of this project is creating awareness on the importance and need of digitalization. The awareness campaign kicks off today with this webinar entitled Translating Digital Prowess into Tangible Return on Investment why digitalization is the only way to go. The webinar will highlight the importance of digitalization at a time when businesses are under pressure. The more so, this is today coupled with geopolitical tensions. Our speakers have to convince why we cannot afford to ignore digitalization and the reason we should feel concerned if our businesses have not embarked on a digitalization journey. All said, digitalization is now the way to go. In fact, organizations that have embraced digitalization have improved their performance by up to five times. Globally, we are relatively in the early stages of organizations choosing mass digital transformation. However, COVID-19 has compelled us to push for digitalization across industries, and there are indications that we could get there quicker than we could have imagined before the pandemic. On the other hand, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development Digital Economy Outlook 2020 highlights the growing importance of digital technologies and communication structures in our daily lives. It further reveals that governments are increasingly putting digital strategies at the center of policy agendas. I would like to thank our speakers for having accepted to conduct the webinar today. First, we will have Dr. Ashwin Kisuna, the consultant for the Enterprise Go Digital project. Then we will have Mr. James Pennington, who will be speaking to us all the way from the United Kingdom. Mr. Pennington is a director of a successful business, providing business and IT consultancy services to a range of clients across multiple sectors in the UK. I would invite you to stay tuned to our digital platforms, including the NPCC website and our Facebook page for other upcoming webinars and ongoing projects. I wish you all an enriching session. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Ganga. Indeed, you're right when you say digitalization is the way to go. Dear participants, I will now invite Dr. Kisuna to conduct the first part of the webinar. Dr. Kisuna has 20 half decades of hands-on experience in ICT, business management, and professional training. He has held C-suite key positions locally and in the region. His main focus has been in the fields of system integration, transformational management, and continuous professional development. He also managed renewable energy projects, namely in the photovoltaic and waste to energy space. Let's now listen to Dr. Kisuna. Dr. Kisuna, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dave, for introducing and welcoming me here. I'm grateful to the National Productivity and Competitiveness Council Board, the Executive Director, the management, and the staff for having me as an integral part of this extremely exciting enterprise, Go Digital project. Good afternoon and welcome to today's virtual audience, both local and overseas. I have the pleasure to start off in the first webinar out of a series of four very interesting ones. As you know, today's topic is translating digital progress into tangible return investment, or why? Why digitalization is the only way to go. I start up with defining um, what does going digital and return investment mean? Although uh, I'm sure that the audience are well acquainted with that, but still. Going digital means redesigning business practices to incorporate digital technology within all aspects of the business. The business practices pertaining, pertains to information on your business operations and business plans, your accounting and financial information, human resources and administration, your products and services, manufacturing processes and methods, sources of supply, advertising and marketing plans, customer lists and sales. Digital technologies are computer equipment, systems and resources that generate and process data. Well known examples include social media, e-commerce, multimedia, the web and smart devices. The return on investment is a metric to measure profitability of an investment and how well an investment has performed. You can measure it as a percentage by calculating and dividing an investment's net profit or loss by the initial cost or outlay. The context today, in business technology investments and decisions are mostly driven by tangible, that is measurable and quantifiable return on investments. For example, an increase in profit, an increase in revenue, a decrease in spending, a decrease in cost of operations, a better price obtained from the supplier, are very tangible return investments, which can be measured, compared, and improved. So how can digitalization be the enabler to achieve this? The goals of going digital, in these days of uncertainty, to be able to remain competitive, going digital can support businesses too. Firstly, Reduce the dependency on a physical office and other overheads. I'll explain that. The heated debate has been around for, for a long time about working from home or working from anywhere, like instead of working or remote work. But that has toned down during the pandemic. People have realized that removing the need of a physical office and other overheads, vehicles, equipment, material, furniture, and sundries, did not damper the business operations, but has rather allowed for business continuity while at the same time made cost savings. In 2019, 4.8% of employed people in Spain worked from home. This figure increased significantly to a staggering 22.3% during 2020. The second point, promote contactless and safe operations through remote access, processing, and delivery. The statement is backed by the recent study across eight industries from Microsoft and the Economist Intelligence Unit. The survey revealed that 72% of enterprises reported that the pandemic has accelerated the industry pace of shifting to digital and allow them to remain resilient. The third point, remove the need for many full-time employees. These employees are not laid off, but can rather be trained, reskilled, or upskilled to meet changing needs and perform other tasks, but more importantly, allowing the business to ride the storm in a win-win situation. Fourth point, 
rely on fewer but reliable providers for services and for materials. By going digital, businesses can access to a wide range of services, service providers, products and services online. They also have the means to streamline and carry out the required due diligence, exercise before engagement and commitment. Fifth point, stay connected irrespective of location, time and place. And this is very important during pandemic times and, and, and beyond. Connection from any device, a PC, a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone, allow for instant and ubiquitous access to information. In other words, from anywhere, anytime and any place. The next point, penetrate new markets and capture new opportunities. Having an online visibility and presence give rise to interoperability with customers, partners, and suppliers. The network effects, network customers, buyers and sellers, open up niche and new business avenues for collaboration and cooperation. Two or more companies can also compete. In other words, compete and collaborate at the same time for mutual benefits. For example, if two or more companies need to order for a commodity, and they are doing presently from different suppliers, they can actually, if they are online, if they can collaborate, they can actually speak to each other and benefit from economies of space from a single supplier. What I mentioned before, the due diligence has been done, which the due diligence can be done before, okay? and therefore reducing, getting a better price, better quality, better proximity, and also a better lead time on delivery. The next point, increase collaboration and employ productivity. Being connected allow collaborative sharing of workload, better synchronization of processes, and monitoring of deadlines, thus boosting employee morale and productivity. And lastly, better resource management, and of course all of the others combined, allow for better management of resources and maximization of throughput, which undeniably give rise to a better return on investment. Now, um, while the COVID-19 pandemic may have spurred widespread interruptions, it has also provided an opportunity for organizations to re-envision and reconsider a digital journey as an integral part of the business strategy that is required for future business continuity and sustainability. And uh, this project that uh, is aiming to bring on board SMEs is aiming to do just that. The major benefits of digitalization that favorably impact the company's return investment are, firstly, improving efficiency and productivity through faster and more effective decision-making. The use of IT can actually help in doing so. Improving customer services relations and customer engagement, providing a better customer experience, exceeding expectations and delighting the customer. Lead to data-driven decisions, data translated into insights and insights into information to enhance business process and remove the tedium from complex tasks. Eliminates redundancy, streamlining of operations, allow more accurate process so that duplicate data and records are eliminated. Operating cost reduction, increasing system efficiency by reducing delivery time, eliminating wasted, wasted effort and improving product quality. The sum total of the above results in which more results in a much more cost-effective way of conducting business by saving the overall cost of processes and hence providing a better return on investment. On a motivating note, as businesses prepare to remain future fit, it will become increasingly apparent that doing digital is a continuous journey and not a destination. In fact, doing digital is no more an option, but rather a compulsion. It's needs for continuous innovation and rapid response to ch change and to challenge and opportunities that arise to shape up new, new breed of decision makers and leaders. These leaders understand the underlying principle that data drives accurate business decision making and therefore leads to higher business productivity, cost saving, efficiency, and attractive return on investment. A quick recap. Go digital for a better ROI. What's the rationale behind it? The IT industry has consistently matured since the late 90s. The increasing affordability of computing devices and applications has accelerated the availability and provision of a wide range of IT services over the internet, 
And today, translating digital prowess into digital ROI is a seamless, feasible proposition. So, the enabler to do all this. There are many ways of doing it, but one of the ways I'm collaborating. Businesses can capitalize and make effective use of computing resources and facilities offered as rental services on the internet, commonly known as cloud computing. Um, I guess that the next speaker will elaborate on, on the ways of cloud computing, software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. So by embracing the digital cloud, companies do not have to worry about the initial capital outlay and the need for outright purchase of computing infrastructure and assets, programs and upgrades, security and control, storage and contingency, support and maintenance services. Everything sits on the cloud and is readily available and a monthly, a monthly rental fee. In fact, the project that we are, we are launching, we are working on, will give the opportunity of uh, 10 selected SMEs to join in in the first place. And obviously we'll look at for the stakeholder analysis, we'll look at the requirements and needs, and then we'll see what's the best option, what's the best fit, what are the, the, the services that you need, and we'll translate this into an IT, we'll digitalize the services, and probably you'll be able to, to do that on the cloud as well. You can access from any device um, that you feel is fit for you. The bottom line, by going digital, companies can therefore reduce their capital expenditure into operational expenditure. This makes the shift to digital a cost-effective business practice and enable companies to secure good return on investment. The way forward, join us in this notable initiative of Enterprise Group Digital Project to grow your business while remaining resilient, productive, proactive, competitive, and Still. Thank you for your attention, and I'll be receptive for questions after the next speaker's delegation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kisuna. This expose has been really very thought-provoking and uh, indeed very insightful, I must say, at the same time. Participants, without much ado, I will now invite Mr. James Pennington to conduct the second part of the webinar. Mr. Pennington is at the present moment in the UK from where he will be speaking. Mr. Pennington has helped to develop the e-business MSc programs at WMG University of Warwick into one of the top ranked MSc programs across the world. Mr. Pennington, the floor is yours now. Thank you. Um, just share my screen. Okay, so obviously, good afternoon and welcome from the UK. Um, I'm hoping the weather there is a lot better than it is here. It's raining and it's very cold at the moment. Um, I'm just going to pick up on the previous speaker. Obviously, we haven't got a lot of time, so this is really just to set the scene and whet your appetite as to where digital technology can start to play inside your business to help you move forward. Um, so why digital business? Well, obviously some of the key points obviously are it can save us money, um, reducing costs, reducing the amount um, of wasted time, improving the return on what your spend is, especially on the marketing side. Um, it improves communication. So the ability to share information more effectively across your organization, but also across to your suppliers, and also um, to your customers. We have the ability to be connected from anywhere. So being giving people the ability to purchase from you um, wherever they are, as long as they have access to an internet connection from an e-commerce store. Um, we move away from restrictive hours because we're opening up our products and our services and the information we hold. So people can self-serve. They can find out the information they need as and when they're ready. Obviously, through revenue models and different ways of making money, it opens up multiple opportunities. It also opens the opportunity for export of goods and information to other areas. And obviously, the freedom side of it, um, you, you're releasing customers, businesses to take advantage 
of your service and product when they want. Um, you know, digital business is not just about a website. Digital business is about all interactions that your organization has. So we've got the buy side. So where you are purchasing goods from or raw materials, um, you're receiving information. How can we use technology now, so e-business technologies, to actually make that interaction clearer and smoother? If we come to the other side, we've got the customer. We class that as the sell side. So how are you going to use tools like e-commerce and digital marketing to actually extend your reach, um, locate more customers, and to present your business in a... Um, you know, present your business through websites and marketplaces and social media tools. So all of these form part of, you know, digitization and transformation. And obviously how you're gonna use technology inside your business. Um, you know, so how are you handling customers? Where are you keeping their information? And there's lots of different things and we're just gonna briefly just, just look at a couple of them. Now, digital transformation, the speaker before me has, has mentioned some of this, okay? Digital transformation, okay, it's about bringing value, integrating, and changing the way you operate and delivering value to customers. Now, from my perspective, um, transformation can be extremely small. It can be you decide to put up a website in order for your customers to come and see your products and services or make contact through you, okay? It's not a full-blown transformation across the organization. You're using technology to change something and the way you work. Um, it is, and I'll state this now, and I'm sure the speaker before will agree totally with me on this, um, his background in technology and systems, okay? Technology does not fix problems. Technology enables us to work smarter, faster, clearer, and quicker. We need to understand what it is we're trying to do first, and then we can look at how we can apply technology to actually enable that process or that function, that operation to happen more efficiently. Now, so technology transformation, if we see it this, so basic, okay, basic office IT, we've got an internet connection, we've got a desktop, we've got phones, and we're using office apps like Word and email to communicate with customers. We can go to the second level, which is bringing in remote access, working remotely, sharing information effectively across a team, some CRM and a website, we drop to the third level, we now start looking at the different aspects of the organization. So innovation, marketing, e-commerce, support. How can technology be used to help us, help us work more efficiently in these different areas? Now, your business may not do all of these. It may only do fulfillment. It may only do innovation but we can use technology in these areas to change and transform how the business works. If we drop to the next level, we've got collaboration and transaction. Um, quite a few of my clients in the UK, they use technology to collaborate. They're not physically taking transactions electronically, but they're working with other companies and they're designing and they're sharing information to manage projects more efficiently. Obviously, transaction is how do we integrate the payments and transact with a customer. And, you know, ending up at the top of the pyramid with a transformed, joined up e-business that uses technology effectively. And what we're trying to do, and hopefully this project is going to look at your businesses individually and start to help to develop a plan of where digital technologies can be used to improve your business operations and give you a return on the investment and spend and time that you are putting in. So it may be, you know, it might be you're going down the marketing channel and the transaction and you apply technology to transform your operations.
Now, obviously, um, a lot of digital work in the UK is around websites. It's around reaching the customer more effectively using digital marketing. So paid advertising on Google, social media, organic posts through Facebook and Instagram. Um, but digital transformation is not just about websites. Digital transformation goes beyond what we see. It's how does your business physically operate behind the scenes? So digital transformation across the whole supply chain. So we've got the upstream going out um, and everybody in this process has a buy side and a sell side. We all sell a product or service and the vast majority of us are buying that from somewhere. Um, and full transformation is being able to move information and data clearly and easily across all parties involved. This is where you may hear as time goes on tools called ERP, uh, Enterprise Resource Planning Tools, or SCM, Supply and Chain Management Tools. Okay, They all have a role in trying to join up businesses effectively from the start all the way through to the customer purchase. Now, so things we look at today inside the business, okay, and also on buy side, software that bolts together software that integrates okay and we're taking the main business functions and using technology to reduce the manual input reduce the loss of information because it was written down and the piece of paper has disappeared getting the customers to actually send us their details and pushing that straight into a system so instead of having to take a phone call handle it we, we use web-based forms where people log their questions, they go direct into a customer relationship tool and we can handle them as a new client and push them through our internal processes. So we're using technology to unify, unify the use of data and improve the flow of information across the business. We've obviously got remote working, which has been you know, my first project at Warwick was back in 1993 and we were designing automotive cars across Europe in an engineering function. So we were using video conferencing, audio, we got shared whiteboards, we got centralised web store repositories for storing information for the whole team to work together. And that was back in 1993. Now, back then, it was trying to convince companies to use this technology. Today, we don't have to convince companies to use video and audio. I'm talking to you from the other, you know, from England today, um, because of the power of technology. It's got faster, it's got better, and now we've become accustomed to using it to actually hold meetings quite easily with people, even in our own organisations. So remote working is here to stay. And some of the stats shared by the previous speaker, we're not gonna see it disappear. Um, obviously cloud systems. So there's an enormous big move and now cloud technologies play a big part in small, medium sized business development because it gives us an easy way to expand our business, integrate with customers and suppliers without having to change our internal IT to accomplish it. So all of these type of tools, we're seeing an enormous rise in these. You know, live chat on websites, the ability to interact with the customer at the point of purchase. Now, if we think about how that gives us a return, as a customer sending you a question via email, that can be three, four, five days before there's an answer. Whereas on a live chat session, is this available in blue? Is this available in green? Can you tell me the exact dimensions of this product? Or what does this service actually deliver? That's instantaneous at the point of conversion in the customer's mind. So the ability to respond quickly and actually push them over into making and into moving forward. 
So cloud computing, um, the vast majority of clients I have in the UK, small, medium-sized ones, the, most of them are using some aspect of cloud, whether it be for their invoicing and their finance, their customer management, or they're using it on email. So with Office 365, Office 365 is a cloud-based technology today with the ability to link in applications on the desktop. Um, from the marketing aspect, um, you know, marketing and digitization, the ability to automate marketing. So again, taking out time, dependent on whether a customer responds to an email, sending them an automatic follow-up. Obviously, websites, e-commerce platforms, all of this is part of the digital transformation journey. Now, websites and e-commerce tools shouldn't stay static. They should be changing and developing as time goes on. We've got mobile applications working into phones and tablets, CRM systems on the marketing side to help you understand your customer, to help you profile and improve your marketing. You know, one of the biggest things that I see working with clients here is they are concerned about conversion rates through their marketing activity. And the usual reason for that is they haven't actually identified who the customer is they're trying to reach and the message that needs to go to them. They send out 10,000 emails to, they send out an email to 10,000 customers and a very, very small percentage would actually be interested in that product or service. Whereas if we think about using CRM effectively without marketing, we actually have a better understanding of this message goes to these people. So we're, we're reaching less, but we're actually getting a much better return and conversion against the activity. And obviously the last one, which is one of the areas I do a lot of work on here in the UK, is around monitoring and measurement. How do we know what works? So looking at, if it's CRM, looking at conversion rates. So we get a lead, how many um, of these leads do we convert? What's the typical process we go through? If we flip it into digital marketing, it's we've just ran this paid advertising campaign on social. What do we get as a result? Should we be spending more money in the activity or are we wasting money? Should we, how did this campaign physically run? How can we change it and optimize it? So for every pound we get, we get more return through sales or engagements at the website. Now, to start this, um, you need to define first of all, Define where your business is today and where your business wants to be in, say, three years' time. Looking at different aspects of the organisation. This is a framework we use on growth programmes in the UK. You know, looking at the turnover and the number of people, the products and services, what do you deliver, okay, your profit margins, and then, you know, and these axes are relevant to you as an organisation. So one of the axes I place on here when I'm working with clients is how, how much do you work in the business and how much do you focus on developing the business? Because usually when you're small, medium business owners, you spend a lot of time working in the business, which doesn't give you the space to think, how can we make things and improve things using technology? The second one is develop a plan. Understand where you add. So what drives the value in your business? How we capture, how we create, and how we're going to deliver that value to the customer. Because all of this forms the basis for any activity using digital. You've got to be able to understand first and then bring in the technology to actually capture, create, and deliver. And from my experience of working on government programs in the UK, 
is a lot of clients have jumped into the technology side before they've understood the business process. They haven't understood the value first. So one thing I would say to all of you that are looking to get engaged in this program, um, understand what it is you're trying to do first and build a map of where you're going to go. And then use the, the program to help you focus, to identify where technology can fit, which parts of your business are ready to be digitized. Uh, if we do that, if you do that, and you come with a more structured approach, you will soon start to see the benefits and the return on your time and investment through being involved with the program. Um, okay, if, if you, my contact details are there, um, I don't have a problem you contacting me, I'm on LinkedIn, give me a search. It's the same photo as on the flyer. Um, hopefully that's give you some inspiration. Uh, it's only 15 minutes worth of time um, to think about, okay, this is something I need to do. It's gonna benefit my business. I need to see where technology can actually fit and bring benefit. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pennington. We are very fortunate actually indeed to have had your views on uh, digitalization. Uh, I would like to thank both our speakers today to have accepted to conduct uh, the webinar. I have no doubt that uh, we have all had the chance to widen our understanding of the importance of digitalization, not only in business, but in the society as a whole. Dear participants, before we move to the questions and answers session, I'll invite you to fill in a form for a survey that we are conducting regarding the Enterprise Go Digital project. Uh, I'll just send you the link right now, just uh, get ready for that. Maybe I'll ask my colleague uh, uh, Sneha to just forward it to you all in the, in the next few seconds. And Sneha, would you please uh, do the honor to, uh, to forward the link, please? Thank you, Sneha. So uh, you have the link there. I'd invite you to please click on it to uh, access the, the form. We'll be getting uh, the, the feedbacks as and when you finish with the forms. Thank you very much for that. We will now proceed with some questions now. Let's have a look at what we have as questions. So, so one of our first question is uh, uh, with COVID-19, is it better to develop and implement in-house technology or outsource to a third party company? Uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Pennington could answer that. It's a very good question. Um, if it's for collaboration and holding meetings, I would be going to a third party. So I just use the tools that are available. Um, because there's so many good tools out there and tools that are, don't cost any money for doing video audio conferencing. There's lots of tools for sharing information and files. So Office 365 provides OneDrive and SharePoint. You've got Google Drive um, and you also can, can get a Dropbox account, which allows you to now create somewhere to share with permissions and security uh, project documents. Um, I think if you're going to go in-house and develop tools, I would recommend being clear with your requirement specification. So what is it you need to accomplish? Because the problem with in-house development is it can take a long time to get the functionality you want, and you'll probably find something that is off the shelf that will do it for you. There's very few situations where we have to bespoke code for the majority of small, small, medium businesses. So I would say, get your specification, then do a proper analysis of what software is available before you go down the route of bringing it in-house. Thank you, Mr. Paddington. Uh, I think you're right when you say that. We, we've got uh, uh, a second question, actually. Uh, 
Does digital marketing require heavy investment or can we use any free platforms for doing so? Uh, well, um, there's lots of platforms out there. Obviously, if you get into the realms of paid advertising, so on Google or Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest or, or Bing, then paid advertising is going to cost you. However, you can learn the basics to be able to run and manage paid campaigns. And you have to set your budget sensibly. But all the other, all the other platforms, so if it's organic reach, it's learn the principles of search optimization. So improving the content of your website, that stuff all of you can do. You know, it's not a difficult concept. If it's social media, um, I use a tool called Hootsuite and that gives a free account that lets me schedule and post. But all of the tools now allow you to post and schedule. So Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, you can create a post and schedule it. So there's a lot of great free resources out there that will teach you the principles of how to do the digital marketing. MailChimp for email marketing. Again, it's free access, works extremely well. So there's a lot of free stuff. Thanks, Mr. Pennington. Perhaps we'd like to ask the same question to Dr. Kisuna. Uh, just to repeat it, uh, Dr. Kisuna, does digital marketing require heavier investment or can we use any free platforms for doing so? What, what are your views actually? I think uh, the previous speakers that have been elaborated down. So there are wide label platforms that are available for digital marketing that can be used instead of, of uh, committing resources and uh, basically uh, the financial uh, outlay for actually acquiring the, the, um, uh, the software to do that. So therefore, um, I think the white label platforms can be customized as well. And that can be used um, appropriately for digital marketing strategies. Thank you, Dr. Kisuna. We've got another question right now from uh, one of our participants, uh, uh, Ms. Vedita Bechu. Uh, how is it possible for SMEs to integrate artificial intelligence to improve sales and profits in their business? So, Mr. Pennington, your views? Um, okay, so some of the CRM tools that are available. So, Salesforce has an AI implementation in it already which will go through your sales catalog, sales, your CRM, and start to look for um, interesting aspects. Um, the, my word of caution on AI would be in order to make it work, you need to have a lot of data to train it effectively, to start pulling out information from your data sets. Because... If it's not trained correctly, it can start pulling out things which are not there. It's a very, very interesting area. Some of the large CRM tools are moving into AI to look at your sales data. There are some simple tools and some, some Python scripts that will cluster data, but your data needs to be ready. And obviously Google, Google's measurement tool, Google Analytics version 4, is heavily biased towards AI and ML to look at insights in what's happening with your website. Thanks, Mr. Pennington. Uh, perhaps Dr. Kisuna might be having uh, another set of views on that. Well, I think AI, um, you, need, you need a lot of data set um, to be able to make maximum use of the AI engine, to be able to interpret. Otherwise, you could end up with having too much data, what means a lot of time is big data. And then to be able to, to use the inference engine to to get the required information can be challenging. There are uh, AI tools incorporated in any software these days, but then we need to, to know exactly what are the requirements of the company. We need to patch the requirements well, the processes, so that we, are, we, we can make use of most effectively of the data set to use the inference engine and then get the right information out of the tool. We have, uh, thanks, uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Kisuna. We, we got a question actually about data. Uh, we got uh, the same uh, uh, participant asking, as SMEs, how can we safeguard data? Your, your views, Mr. Pennington? Uh, in the UK, we, we're going quite hard 
under GDPR rules. So we have to, we can't collect data, which is personalized. We can get names and addresses and things like that. We're very governed on what we can and can't collect. I would say, so this is one of the things that comes out with cloud computing. How secure is my data? Um, the vast majority of good quality cloud providers, your data is safe. And this comes down to then, again, requirement specification, what is it you need and checking your providers actually provide that level of access. Um, just make sure it's, it's secure. Um, if you're storing it on your own laptop, making sure that you've got encryption running. So if for some reason you lost the laptop, the data is still encrypted. If you're using a cloud provider, make sure they are protecting data as well. It, it is a big risk today. Um, everybody's concerned about privacy, especially in the digital marketing world. Thanks, Mr. Pennington. You've used uh, Dr. Kisuna. I think, first of all, define the internal business process for data protection. Um, uh, Mr. Pennington mentioned GDPR, which is a very important point. Uh, define the internal business process. We know who to have, who have access to what, what are the levels of access in the organization. This is the first step. And then, obviously, encryption levels. You need to encrypt the data. Um, these days, there are, there are homomorphic encryption. I don't want to get too technical, but uh, data usually, people can read it because at the point of reading it, it when it's encrypted, it decrypts. But with homomorphic encryption, it stays it stays the same, so that you know only the person who's have access to that data and have the goods can actually decrypt and read the data. But this this is very technical. But uh, I would say the internal business process and then the encryption, and at the same time is to educate the, the users and have the best practice in, in terms of data protection and the use of data and data privacy and confidentiality. Thanks, Dr. Kisuna. Oh, we had uh, we got a few more questions actually. Uh, our, 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 one of our participants has asked, how can we differentiate ourselves from our competitor by using digital means? Um, any one of you can answer that? I'll let my colleague go first. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think this is a very interesting question because as you mentioned uh, earlier, um, technology comes after. First of all, it's a strategy, what the organization needs. And then the culture of the organization, where everyone is involved. If, if shareholders or the stakeholders take a decision at the very top level, everyone should be on board and should be aligned. And then only comes the customer and then lastly the technology. So therefore, uh, how do you differentiate? It depends on very much internally how your business process, because obviously your, your competitors also will embrace digitalization. And how do you differentiate from your competitors very much on how digitally mature your organization becomes? We have, uh, as part of the process, we are defining digital maturity model for SMEs. And the selected SMEs will walk the journey with us, look at the digital maturity models and where they are in that journey. So therefore, it will very much depend on how we, we actually handle this and look at the requirements of each and every organization. And that would, would actually differentiate how digital strategies give them the competitive edge, depending on the digital maturity model, the resources they have, the preparedness, the awareness, the literacy in the organization, the culture of the organization, the management buying in, there are so many factors. Mr. Pennington, perhaps your views on that? Yeah, so on the digital side, it's been, you, you've got to understand where your value comes. So what is it that makes you as a business or your product or service different to other people? And then we start selling that message to the defined users. Um, I would say one of the things that people don't do enough is they don't actually go and see what competitors are doing. So obviously, if we're going down a digital channel route, looking at what they're doing on social platforms, look at what their website is doing, trying to understand if they are paying to push out any messages. So all of this forms part of a competitor analysis. And when you start looking at them from that perspective, you can start identifying, okay, well, they're quite, they're weak at this. So we're quite good at customer um, empathy and customer engagement. Well, let's try and do something where we bring in our customers. So we bring in more testimonials and, and video reviews and getting our customers to engage on social platforms with us because then they can do our marketing for us. 
So one of the, you know, in the UK, I would definitely say one of the biggest issues I come across is people do not have any idea where their product or service brings a value. So they've got, they don't know how to sell their organization because they don't know how they're different. And there are various tools and frameworks that can help you identify where you're strong, but also where you're weak. But you need to look at the competitors to see where your area of opportunity is. Thanks, Mr. Pennington. Uh, we've got uh, another question in-house right now uh, from Francois. Uh, what are the skills required for automation to be adopted in a company? Are those skills available in Mauritius? Perhaps a question that could be targeted towards Dr. Kisuna. Dr. Kisuna, perhaps we could have your views on that. Well, I think there's mixed video skills required for automation per se. Uh, but uh, the generic skills for IT professionals required to effectively, effectively run the, uh, the software or you know, the, the suited programs. We need a project, pro, uh, project coordinator, program coordinator or mentor to be able to, to assess what is required and how it's been run and, and also to give the, the feedback, the feedback of the performances, how it, can be, how it can be better. So we need two or three people to start up with. And then as we go on, we're going to put up other, 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 other reader skills in the IT space to be able to, to mount the project. Mr. Pennington, uh, would you like to add something on this? Yeah, I think I think on automation, there's lots of different areas. So I'm going to say, um, if it's automation of marketing, then that's fairly straightforward. And there's tools out there that do automated marketing, so you can build those those funnels. If it's automation and passing information from one system to another, then you need people who can. You can, you can write automation scripts to do that. Um, uh, and obviously not knowing the skill sets in Mauritius, um, I, you know, your best place to answer, are they there? Um, but automation, if we're looking at system to system, that's a lot more complicated than automating, um, sending out emails or somebody, somebody looked at my website, so I'm going to now... I'm going to send them a message through a social channel. That side of the automation side is pretty much there, and it's just a case of learning the tool sets. Thanks, Mr. Pennington. Perhaps we have one last question right now. Uh, in a digital journey, how much time does it take to get a return on investment? Uh, Mr. Pennington, perhaps you also can answer that. Um, if, if you're starting out and let's say it's trying to sell product through the online medium, it can take a while to get a sale um, because by the sheer nature of, you may be moving customers from a traditional model of retail into a, um, I now want you to buy from my website. And you've also, when you're doing that, you've got to think about like moving somebody from how, how, they, how they like to, to engage to a new way. And that can be a mindset shift for them. Um, it, it can take a while. It, and I'm not going to say this is... So on the sales side, it can take a while to get sales. Inside the business now, if we're looking at where digital fits there, um, again, you've got to convince your team and your staff to get alongside this, that it's going to actually improve your business. So I've done many a CRM implementation where the senior management haven't actually got the staff involved, which means you're always fighting a barrier because it's the staff that will use the tools. And if they don't feel part of it, they naturally rebel against it if they think it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring some risk to their job. So some of it can be really quick. Some of it can can take time it's not a quick it's not a it's not a okay put digital in tomorrow and you'll see results on wednesday dr Kinsuna, would you agree with mr pennington over that sure um i think it's, it's, it's spot on because you know you need you need to get the you need to know um whether there's any resistance to change in the organization if they're used to do the work in such a way and then you put the digital technology in it will take them some time for them to adapt. But again, it comes to the culture and how much buying it, how much awareness is done. 
It takes some time to reach there, but also it depends on which application you use. The complexity of the application, how, how long it takes to, to actually come, come, come to terms with it and get acquainted. But it's a very difficult to, to put a time frame. But uh, having said that, we need to start somewhere. And uh, we need to assess all these parameters and be aligned um, so that we can get the uh, answers and probably how long that would take, depending on which application, depending on the, on the organization, where it is, the culture, and then uh, the people mindset and any resistance to change that needs to be addressed. Thank you, Dr. Kisunel. Thank you, um, Mr. James Bennington. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, participants, uh, thank you for taking out the time to follow up our first webinar today. We also thank you for your questions, and uh, we hope that uh, you have found your answers along with some good explanations in your areas of interest. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have now reached the end of our webinar. Now, save the date. Uh, our next webinar is on the 1st of April, and it's entitled The Digital Ecosystem, How to Bridge the Gap to Make Way for high productivity and excellence. So we will be sending you the link to register and you'll be invited to attend it. At the same time, I seize the opportunity to invite you to keep track of our upcoming webinars and other projects on the NPCC website, npccmauritius.org and our Facebook page, Facebook slash NPCC Mauritius. Thank you everyone and see you soon on our next webinar. Good, good evening. <laughs>